Jaybear 1000 here. Today we're going to talk more about this I crashed my plane from Trevor Jacob. Okay, we're going to talk some more about that and uh, my personal opinion on what may have happened here or what's going on. More questions than answered so far. So let's get into this. Okay, guys, so this just doesn't seem right to me, okay? I'm going to go over some things I know a lot of people ha already have, but I also want to talk about some, some engines, engine issues that may be going on here. Uh, first of all, let me start by saying I'm not questioning. I don't think anyone's questioning that he, he crashed his plane. The question is, did he do it on purpose? In my opinion, yes. And this, by the way, disclaimer, I shouldn't have to say this, but I'm going to. Uh, this is all my opinion. I, you know, I mean, I'm not a licensed airplane mechanic, but I am ASE certified on internal combustion engines, which that's what we're going to be talking about here today and some also, also some, some more interesting things. So, uh, one thing I want to touch on is... Okay, right here, you see his door, right there. Now look, the engine has just now stalled, okay? Let's look at that again. Okay, see the door? The engine's just now stalling. Now before, the door's closed. Okay, now here, it looks like it's, it's already ajar, but look, it's definitely ajar there, you know? If, if, let's say he's cruising at 70 miles an hour, um, you know, it's going to be hard to push that door open. If you don't believe me, try it. If you do try it, you're an idiot, but go down the road 70 miles an hour and try to hold your door open. Really hard to do. Now, but right here, uh, I've had so many comments on my other videos, um, about this, this, uh, this issue or whatever you want to call it um, and I appreciate everyone putting their two cents in and um, and you know your points of view and, and stuff like that I really appreciate it got some uh, interesting comments and uh, but uh, one of them was about they didn't think he he uh, shut the mags off or they said oh shoot I have to bring it up here um, that uh let me get this here for a second here and i'll bring it up here on my phone and what it is is I, i'm questioning the uh what i am questioning is the validity of him having an engine engine problem um I really don't think he did. Like, uh, no, I said something about, uh, you know, did he forget to shut the mags off? And, and, um, this person said, uh, he didn't forget to shut the mags off. That's how he made the engine quit. It's a possibility. You know, like I said, everyone's, uh, I appreciate everyone's input. That's a, that is a, that's a possibility. But what I'm seeing here in this, it doesn't look like he did that to me. Um, like I said, this is my speculation. This is what I'm seeing. Okay. Um, right here, you see it, it kind of stutters. And this, this plane's trying to start again. Right here, he's, he's trying to stall this plane out. And I don't just mean the engine. I mean, he's trying to slow it down where and if you look there how fast that's spinning okay right here if you look there how fast that's spinning right there um and then it cuts to this where it's where it's just completely dead to me that is reminiscent of something running out of fuel and i'll tell you why because it looks like the engine 
let's say he shut the fuel off. Let's say, uh, no, you know, let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Let's say a fuel line clogged. It is an old plane. I guess it was in pretty bad shape. But I mean, you could get in the damn thing and take it up in there and fly it. He proved it right there. Okay, it's 1940. I get it. I'll touch on that here in a minute. What it, let's just say it was a mechanical issue where it was running out of fuel. That's what it's acting like to me. Like it's cutting out and starting kind of, we've all run out of gas, right? And that's, your engine just don't shut off and you're done when you run out of fuel. Because it's, you know, there's fuel moving around. You're getting some fuel. You're not. You're getting some, that's what it looks like is going on to me here. Uh, I do believe this has a Continental engine. I think it was like 65 horsepower. I do believe if this thing had two magnetos on it, uh, I can't see both magnetos going out and it just, you know, and it, it acting that way. If he did shut them off, what I can see is the engine just stopping completely, not trying to start itself. What it's doing there's a pressure from the air he's flying, you know. Um, it's called windmilling. And the wind is actually turning the engine over. So a lot of people, I've seen some people comment on other videos about, so 1940 that didn't have electronics, therefore it did not have electronic ignition. It didn't. It did not. It didn't have a transponder. It did not have an electronic ignition. You actually had to spin the prop to start these engines over, I've done it. I've done it, okay? And um, they start easy. Let me tell you, if you get a quarter turn on that prop, it, it's gonna start for you. Um, so, first of all, he didn't try. He didn't try at all to restart it. And how you would restart this in the air, bring your nose down a little bit, get some speed going, that's gonna turn that propeller for you. That's the same as cranking it over, okay? He didn't try that. His engine stopped and he bailed. That's piss poor piloting. I'm not a pilot, but I know they don't teach you, hey, if your engine fails, jump out. That's that's not, I, that, I don't believe, I don't believe that they taught him that. So, uh, okay, let's, let's get to the fuel issue. Okay, so someone explained to me that there is a, uh, the header tank sits just behind the firewall with a float indicator sticking up in front of the windscreen. Look at the view from, look at the view from the wing. You can see the indicator sticking up almost full. Okay, so let's go to that view. Okay, this is the view he's talking about. There should be a fuel indicator. I'm not exactly sure where it is. Because this is what I was talking about the other day. This looks like some kind of line. Okay, it's copper for some reason. I don't know if that's what he's talking about. But he may be talking about this right here. Okay, see that? That may be what he's talking about. And the alert went, what that did was, it. there's a float in there. And it raises it up so that would get up higher and the less gas you got the lower it goes makes sense yeah it does look like it's all the way up but isn't there a way to make that stay up there all you gotta do is give it a little bend or something and it's going to stay up there so it looks full now i'm not saying it's not but i'm saying so right here would be the the where he's talking about the tank gas tank is so i'm agreeing with him on that you know wholeheartedly yeah i am agreeing with him on that so right here is the fuel tank right and like i said i know on the other wing it carried six gallons of fuel which was unhooked let's, let's go to this here right here this is not even hooked up See right here, this looks like it says on. Usually that's the way they work is when it's in. When this switch is in line, usually that's on and this is shutting it off. It's not hooked up. This is the thing I was talking about here. What's this line for? Uh, someone said this, this is uh, for the airspeed. 
this tube right here is for the airspeed. Uh, could be, but it's going into the wing. It's going into the wing up here. Uh, why would it be going into the wing and not down into the instrument panel? Of course, like I said, we can't see the instrument panel. Um, see, right here, it looks like looks like his GoPro is turned on. right here it looks like it's turned off but th this is what I'm talking about this is definitely unhooked you know this is your auxiliary tank right here okay so and again I, I'm not sure what this copper copper line is for here but it's definitely not hooked up it looks like it should go into that so this uh, Patrick Davy um, so he says the tank which I agree with him would be oops. he's saying the tank would be right in here and I've also heard other people talk about that's where the tanks were on these 1940 uh, Taylor crafts right here seems right uh, so without putting my hands on the plane on the engine like I said if a wing would fly off I, I don't know what would cause that a or whatever if a wheel flew off, I could look at it and tell you what caused it, you know. It's mechanical. As far as the fuselage on the plane, I don't know anything about them. I know how they work. But I, you know, I couldn't look at it and go, okay, that's a stress crack or, you know. Uh, but I can tell you about the engine. I'm not sure if this had a fuel pump on it. But there's so many reasons that's just my guesstimation that it ran out of fuel whether he did it or not I don't know I can't say for sure without like I said put my hands on this engine and looking uh, did the carburetor ice over well it shouldn't have um, you know could it have I, I suppose so but I really don't think that this would this was equipped with a carburetor heater okay uh, I'm not positive but could there have been dirt and fuel line yeah there could have been there could have been uh, what I'm doing is I'm trying to rule out I, I can tell you it's not a catastrophic failure of the engine it did not seize up like if he lost oil pressure what's going to happen when you lose oil pressure on any any engine and by the way this is just like a Volkswagen engine okay guys pretty much the same thing just a different company um, it's it's you know it's opposed the pistons are you know like your V8 or your V6s they run like this these pistons run like this, okay? They're opposite each other. So, if you lose oil pressure and and you've run it long enough without oil pressure to where it's going to stall out, it's going to stall, it's going to stall, it's going to seize up on you, it's going to lock up. If you throw a rod, it's going to lock up, okay? What about compression? I can't see this thing losing compression in all four cylinders at the same exact time to where it's going to kill it. I can't see that happen. But I can tell you though that I can guarantee you this plane, this did not suffer catastrophic engine failure. Um, so if we look here, Bells out, yeah, hero. See, that engine's wanting to start. That's not a sign of a catastrophic failure, guys. See, that's what's talking about. It's windmilling. That that engine is trying to start. It's turning over, so it didn't throw a rod. I don't see any oil on the side of this plane anywhere. You know, so, see, I, I see no oil blowing back, nothing blowing back. So, you know, to tell me that it, of course, I can't see the other side. To tell me that it, that it threw a rod, but use a little bunch of hole in the block. But if, if you throw a rod, it's definitely going to lock up on you. Um, this plane was, this engine was not locked up. Um, now, as far as, uh, trying to um, 
to glide. Okay, I I don't really see why he's over nine thousand feet. For, first of all, that I I think it's kind of kind of crazy to be flying that plane that high to begin with. But he's over nine thousand feet. Um, why can't he glide? Well, he, he can. He can. And I'll tell you why. There, there's a gentleman on here. I'll get to this here in a second. Um, this gentleman right here, please check him out. Uh, he goes by Scooby1961. He's, he's got a lot of information on this. He actually has a plane. A private plane. He's got an experimental plane. Um, he actually flew over the, where... Uh, Trevor was starting to have engine problems where he said engine failed. Well, he actually flew his plane to that. We're not talking about simulating like everybody's doing with these simulators. You know, I'm, I'm not for that. I'm not going to go with that. This gentleman flew his actual airplane over to where Trevor says he lost, uh, lost his engine. And he actually, he, <laughs> this man right here, actually uh and he took off from the same airport as trevor did he glided he glided his aircraft his own plane back and landed to the airport he shut his engine out and glided it back to the airport uh he said he probably could have went another four miles so there's no excuse for trevor uh not not finding a place to land there's no place to land there's a million places to land there i mean you know, if you look at, look at some, I mean, look at this right here, you know, like other people have mentioned, down in here, um, look at this, perfect, perfect, well, he's flying, he's flying a bush plane, guys, which, what's it for? Its intended purpose is to take off and land in the bush, of course, it can be kind of rough, but geez, any, anybody with some, those things, I mean, I, I have seen them, I've been to a lot of air shows, and I have seen them land in a hundred yards, you know, and uh, I've seen them land at half a football field, 50 yards. So, here's the thing right here, you can't tell me he couldn't have put that plane down anywhere in here, and not got that thing to stop. Um, that plane was intended for and if anything it would have slowed him down more being on gravel or dirt or whatever I mean I'm pretty confident with within an hour of flying a plane I could probably I mean these things were so simple these planes they damn near fly themselves I'm pretty confident see here's a plane right here that I I probably could have put this down here granted I may have may have bent it up a little bit but I'm sure I could have put that plane down and came out okay. That's survivable. That is definitely survivable right there. You can see the plane here. I mean, look at that. That plane, he's want that plane is wanting to want to fly. Look at that. So, I mean, how could he not have glided somewhere, like I said, right there? Look how perfect that is. Bullshit. I mean, you know, you bring it down, you line it up, get where you need to be, go full flaps, and, you know, look at this. Let's back it up a little bit here. I'm telling you, look at that plane. I mean, it's pretty much gliding itself. I just, I, I, I don't get it. I mean, the it's turning over also another thing is uh you know he i'm pretty sure this 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 particular plane probably did not have a uh have a radio in it another thing is that a radio antenna there instead of the fuel gauge but i'm going to believe this this patrick guy I, i'm you know he seems to be pretty confident that that's what that is, so I'm going to I'm going to take his word for that. But if you look at this here, okay, why is the plane tip now? Why is it tip now? We'll get into that here in just a second. Right here, what's this? 
This is a headset. I know somebody commented on someone's video or men mentioned in their video uh, that you know maybe that was for for one of his cameras. No, that's not that's not for a camera. That's not what that's for. That's an actual headset. Uh, it's got a mic. Did he call for Mayday? I read somewhere where he called one Mayday and bailed. But I, I don't understand why you wouldn't call for Mayday and listen for more instructions. I don't get it. <laughs> and, and as far as his plane, I don't... Uh, he's, he's, he's got to bail out. But as soon as he bails out of here, I see the yoke did go forward a little bit. Is that what caused the nose to go down? But, even so, let's say this guy only weighs 150 pounds. Even if that yoke went forward a little bit, right there, enough to put it down, shouldn't his weight coming out of there be enough to raise that plane back up? I don't know. I, you know, like I say, I'm not, I'm not sure about, about that. It's just, you know, <laughs> laws of physics. Um, I just, uh, here's something, okay. Um, okay, let's just say, okay, he did have fuel in it, whatever. People starting to speculate that this and his leg right here. Wait, this is a great example of what I... Looks like he is hiding something. What's he hiding? Uh, people speculate that's one of those little uh, fire extinguishers, which I have one in the boat. We get, there's one in the Corvette and it's about that size and it looks just like that would be the handle there's the little spout they just got a little spout on them was and remember first thing he did was go to his plane he hiked to his plane okay all right did he bring that with him on purpose did he hike to that plane with that to make sure there wasn't no fire and even if there wasn't no fuel in that in that plane guys even if there was no fuel, a hot engine laying on dry brush like that and start a fire. And here he's playing with this. In my, like I said, my opinion, yeah. There's no doubt he crashed the plane. I think he did it on purpose. Uh, I think he shut the plane down. He got it to stall. He, he bailed out. He, he was thinking there may be a fire. Why has he got his fire extinguisher there? Because I, I don't know if that's is what it is but there's definitely something there about the size of that and, and you know putting people's lives at risk we know how california fires have been stupid it's stupid to put a hot engine down anywhere out there in that bush there's hiking trails there there's camping areas all through that area that plane could have went where you know once you let go of it it's going to go where it wants to go and you've seen it was gliding pretty good sure it was in a in a slight spin but you know, it wasn't really spinning. It was just kind of in a slight turn. Uh, there was places he could have landed. Uh, last ditch effort is, well, you know, it's where that, <laughs> that saying comes from. Come on. You know, the last thing you do is ditch. There, there was no reason for him to ditch. And why did he fall? You know, why did he free fall 3,000 feet? Doesn't make sense to me. Because there, uh, there was another channel where the guys actually counted how long he fell did the math on it and they came up to around 3,000 feet he free he he, he free fall 3,000 feet I, I just right here I just don't get it this plane look at that that plane is pretty much flying it probably better than he could Doesn't make sense. There's some information on the on the craft, you know. Uh, 165 horsepower. Uh, there's a. See, this one looks to me looks like it's a Continental A65. But okay, here's what I, I want to talk about too, right here. When he's coming up onto the plane, all right. There's the plane. Oh sitting in all this brush here. Where's my tire? Now I quit your acting, dude. Holy smokes. 
Holy shit. What I want to show you is coming up here. Oh, there's literally nothing. No. Okay, look at this engine. This engine is the cleanest engine I've seen in a long time, especially for a 1940 Continental. Um, looks like it's been overhauled like it's supposed to be. There is no oil leaking here around the jug. Uh, valve covers, no oil. I see no damage to these to where it may have thrown a piston. I don't see it. And you know something yeah. else I don't see. No water. I had a water. Uh, see, I see no oil, nothing. I don't see any fuel leaking. So, Jug in the back. So, I believe that guy, when he said that where, where, the, uh, where the fuel tank is. Okay, so the fuel tank with this much damage should have been right back in here. I don't see any fuel leaking here. None. Okay, I believe this to be the passenger side of the plane. I believe this is that one that one hose that is going up to I believe that to be this hose here. It's right over that right wing. Okay. So, and again, I, I see no oil. I don't see anything dripping. So if this is it, the, the, that wing is right here is where the wing would be. Right up in here. Okay. I, I see nothing dripping. No, I see anything. nothing coming out in the front no water. of it. No, the no fuel. Um, there's the other... The other, uh, there's the copper tube that's going up through there. I see nothing wet. I see no smoke. Um, oh my gosh, dude. I have no idea where. I do, however, believe he could have landed on this damn hillside if he wanted to. I think he could have brought it right up through here and landed it. Crash landed it. Yeah, of course. I, I don't know. But, like right here, it says... A few days after the crash, sources at the airport say Jacob returned with cuts and bruises and told the story of what had allegedly occurred. Employees informed Jacob that the incident would need to be reported to the FAA. Now, when, in his video, he says he contacted the FFA and the, the, uh, the FAA and the NTSB immediately. Well, here it says a few days later, they had to tell him, look, this has got to be reported. Uh, Jacob and a friend allegedly, now I don't know how true this is, uh, chartered a helicopter to remove the wreckage from the forest and transport it to an unknown location. Jesus, dude, what are you doing, Trevor? Uh, but, you know, this gentleman here... Um, like I said, he, you know, he's his own pilot, you know. I He may have built his plane, I can't remember, but I know he, he's licensed to work on his own plane. This guy seems to know what, what, he's, what he's talking about here. And it just, it amazed me why somebody would, you know, <laughs> would try to think that they could get by with that, you know. Um, he also... Uh, was looking for the for the plane crash site and he, he couldn't find the plane and he he had you know he had his ducks in a row he he knew the coordinates knew where to fly to and and I watched his video and I looked real close he had three different angles on his plane to where maybe we could spot some but it looked to me like he was pretty much right over the spot and I didn't see anything either so is is the plane there I I, I don't think so. I mean, why, why would you move it, you know? It doesn't make sense to me. I don't know. I just, to me, it just seems like it, it was a fuel issue. And, but I, I really believe whatever the issue was that caused that engine to, to shut off, shut down, he, he did it. He did it. Um, there, there's no doubt in my mind he did this on purpose. And I think he should be prosecuted for it, you know? I mean, I mean, this is...
This is crazy, guys. Why? You know, look at that. Many places for him to land. Many places. He could have glided. I firmly believe, because he can glide, what, 15, 20 miles in a plane like that? I firmly believe that he could have glided this aircraft right back to, look at this, right back to the uh, airport I, where he took off. I really think so. And he's looking down on his plane right here from his chute. You're going to tell me he couldn't land down here with his parachute and walk the hell out of there? I think he could have. Uh, why go back to your plane? Because I know, first of all, I wouldn't have done any free falling. I wouldn't have had a camera in my hand. I w I'll worry about filming later. Uh, I, I, I would have just uh, opened my chute right off the get. As soon as I was away from that plane, my chute would be open. And I'd be looking for a place like this right here, right here to land. <laughs> Most definitely to, to land my shooting. I wouldn't be trying to parachute as close as I could to that plane for any reason at all. Uh, screw them cameras, I'll get them later, whatever. I want out of there, especially in a survival emergency situation. You're, you're not going to do that. This is stupid, you know. You just, you bring it, because these things, these planes could, you could go as slow as what, 30, 35 miles an hour. You could get that thing down in here, line it up where you want to line it up, you know, go full flaps and flare it out and set that thing down and I, you would be fine. <laughs> you would totally be fine. Um, there, there was, there was no reason for that. Uh, so anyway, guys, I mean, that, I, that's all I got for you right now. I just, um. I just can't get over no, somebody's anything. attitude, no water. you know, Mister. I'm better than you. And, oh, I crashed a plane, you know. Well, I don't have a pilot's license. I don't even want to get one, but I'd love to have that plane. It's 1940, you know. Come on, man. That engine, jeez. Oh I mean, uh, I, I can't. Me. I I really I don't think he had engine here. problems. I really don't think. I mean, look at that engine. There's literally nothing. Look at that. No. Anything. That's right. There's literally no nothing. Water. No Got oil. No fuel leaking. That's a lot of damage for not to have at least one of your tanks, you know, get a hole punctured in it. Anyway, guys, I want to say thank you for watching. I appreciate it. And, uh, you know, stay tuned. I'm going to stay up on this as, as much as I can. But uh, from a mechanic's point of view, internal combustion engine. I, to me, it, it looked like a fuel issue. I think, but I, I really think whatever happened to that engine, I, I think he, I firmly believe he did it on purpose. He shut that engine down, jumped out of his plane, and hey, sponsor me, Ridge Wallet, you know? Uh huh, yeah, whatever. So, anyway, guys, this guy's a piece of crap. I don't care. I'll, I've said it once, twice. I'll say it again. I, I, I would tell it to his face, he's a piece of crap. But. Uh, don't forget to check out Scooby 1961. He's uh, he's pretty knowledgeable on planes. Like I said, he's a pilot. And he actually flew his plane over there and glided it back to the airport. Same airport that Trevor here took off from. Uh, it says he couldn't. Uh, <laughs> I just don't believe it. What do you guys think? Uh, please keep, you know. Let me know in the comments below what, what you feel about it and the input and the information. And, uh, you know, I want to say thanks again to everybody for, for doing that. And I want to thank Patrick again for, you know, letting me know about the uh, uh, the fuel tank and the fuel gauge. Like I said, uh, those gauges wouldn't be hard to keep up. Uh, but I just... And I, I just think it was ridiculous, even if it did have fuel in it and he shut it off some other way, to go ahead and land that thing with fuel in it, that was even stupider. Doesn't make sense to me. Even, oh, I got this little fire extinguisher. If something happens, I'll put it out. Maybe that's why he went down to the plane to make sure it wasn't going to catch on fire. But by the time he would have got to that plane, that whole hillside would have been gone up. Gone. So he's stupid all the way around. 
Shea Bear with Mental Man Legend. We're off for now. Again, guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye, guys, and take care. Have a good weekend.